it is 901 and this is the June 2nd meeting of mm -hmm. the Santa Cruz County Regional Transportation Commission and we will begin with a roll call. Commissioner Bertrand. Present. Commissioner Olenek. Present. Commissioner Brown. Here. Commissioner Johnson. Here. Commission Alternate Hurst. Here. Commissioner Caput. Here. Commission Alternate Schifrin. Here. Commission Alternate Quinn. Here. Commissioner Koenig. Here. Commissioner McPherson. Here. Commissioner Alternate Kalantari Johnson. Here. Commissioner Parker. Commissioner Rockin. Here. And you have a quorum. Okay, we'll now review the items to be discussed in closed session. And that would be Steve, if you're here. That's correct. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. We have um, one closed session, well, two closed sessions today. They are both related to labor negotiations with CORE and RAM. Today. And we will take those up uh, at the appropriate time on the agenda. All right. Thank you. So we will now move into. You should ask if, if the public have any comments on oh, those. Oh, thank items. you. I'm sorry. Um, are there members of the public who have uh, questions or comments about the closed session items? Yes. Um, I see, I don't see any hands up. Um, so we will uh, uh, move into closed session now. And when we return, we'll uh, have our public portion of our meeting, which includes uh, findings on SB 361 and um, report out from closed session and oral communications. So if you're here for oral communications, um, hang on, <laughs> we will be back. Um, Thank you. When was, okay, I got the uh, closed session Zoom link. So if anyone does not have the closed session link, um, it looks like uh, Commissioner Kalantari Johnson, I see your hand is up. Are you, yeah, you need the link? I think I still have not. Let's see. Yeah, I think this I have. This to be headed CTV webinars. Yeah, I'll have to look too myself. <clears throat> I'll, forward, we just... I'll forward the link to both um, Commissioners Kalantari Johnson and McPherson. Uh, you'll just have to change your name. You'll show up as me. Okay, thank you. Okay. Okay, so we are headed to closed session. Uh, Commissioner uh, McPherson, did you? No, no it's good. <clears throat> okay, great. Um, we'll see you. See you soon. Looks like we have a quorum back for open session. So I'll go ahead and um, reopen our meeting with item four. That is a report on closed session. Uh, Madam Chair, there was no reportable action in closed session. The commission gave direction to your labor negotiators. All right, thank you. Our next item is additions or deletions to the agenda. Any changes? the agenda. No, there are no changes to the agenda, Madam Chair. Thank you. Thank you. And so we will now move on to our consent agenda that consists of one administrative item, uh, adoption of findings for virtual and hybrid meetings under uh, Assembly Bill 361. Unless there's comments from the board or public, I'll move approval of the consent agenda. I do not see anyone. Um, oh, it looks like we do have an attendee who's raised their hand. Um, I'll, I'll pull back the motion then. Okay, so um, we'll um, we'll take public comments and uh, then uh, call for the motion. Uh, we have Brian from Trail Now. You're up. Hi, this is Brian. I just want to clarify. This is on the closed session, not the oral communications. Before I make a comment. The, we're we're right. The item that we're considering right now is uh, just extending the findings for virtual and hybrid meetings under AB three sixty one. Public comment on closed session occurred before we went into closed session, 
uh, this okay. morning. All right. Okay. So all, uh, but you haven't done oral sessions. Right? We we sure have not. That's next up. Okay. Cool. So yeah, let me make a comment about the virtual hybrid. I think it's a phenomenal. Like, you know, one of the things I always talk about when I talk about the pandemic, it's it did bring us some really good um, things, especially for the charter of this organization, which is transportation. What the term I like to use is it's forced us to the future, right? It's really forced us to, to start using those virtual tools that we have. <coughs> Our community has that. And, you know, I really want to just recognize the RTC staff on, on how they were able to implement <coughs> So, so I just want to just take a moment and recognize staff for the great work they did and, and support the continuation of hybrid meetings. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Mr. Peoples. Any other comments? Okay. I, um, seeing no additional hands raised, we I will, will now. I will move uh, approval of the consent agenda. Second. Okay. We have a motion and a second, and we'll call for a vote. Roll call. And I'm looking Commissioner, at Commissioner Bertrand. I agree. Commissioner Brown. Aye. Commissioner Johnson. Aye. Commissioner Alternate Hearst. Aye. Commissioner Caput. I think you might have left us. Okay. Commission Alternate Schifrin? Aye. Commission Alternate Quinn? Yes. Commissioner Koenig? Aye. Commissioner McPherson? Commissioner Alternate Collins Johnson? Aye. McPherson's aye. Thank you, Commissioner McPherson. Uh, Commissioner Rodkin? Aye. And that passes unanimously. Thank you. Okay, we will now move on to oral communications. Oral communications is a time for members of the public to address the commission on any item within the jurisdiction of the commission that is not already on the agenda. The commission will listen to all communications, but in compliance with state law, uh, may not take action on items that are not on the agenda. Speakers are requested to state their name clearly so that it can be accurately recorded in the minutes of the meeting. To comment, if you're on your phone, you want to press uh, star nine to raise your hand. And I see two hands up. Um, Brian from Trail Now. You're next. Yeah, hi. Thank you. This is Brian Peoples with Trail Now. Um, I don't know if you can display what I sent, um, which was the the half mile of track from Pajaro, UP uh, rail yard to um, the Pajaro River trestle. Um, all of you should have received an email from us on that section and our continued recommendation on looking at using it as a access road trail. Um, we all know that the, the volume of freight along that is continuing to decline. And, and at the end of the day, your organization is, a, you know, the charter is transportation and improving transportation for all Santa Cruz community, county residents, including Watsonville. Um, but the other part of your role, because you own the, the rail corridor or the coastal corridor, is property management. And right now you have tenants on there that is not the most effective use of that property. So we feel it's very important to start looking at that role and improving the utilization and the return on investment of that property for the community. Um, not just uh, both financially, as well as uh, mobility, increasing the mobility. And, you know, a lot of people might say, oh, we can't think of a, a we could never have a, a, a trucking operation from the UP yard to um, the local co customers. But I would say you can't because look at the elaborate schemes you had for seg uh, scenario two for segment nine and 10. You had these uh, very expensive elevated platforms 
So if you're able to create such complicated platform trail, I would think that you can come up with a solution to better utilize that half mile section. So thanks again for your time and have a good weekend. Thank you, Mr. Peoples. We did receive the email, so um, we are able to, to view that offline or online. Um, okay, our next speaker is Barry Scott. Uh, thank you, uh, thank you, Chair, and thank you, Commission uh, Commissioners. I am. Uh, I, I've been attending every meeting I can possibly imagine ever having been held, and especially during the last couple of months with regards to the study of trail alternatives. And uh, there were two, there were two Zoom meetings and a public open house and a bicycle advisory committee meeting uh, and presentations used slides to compare the cost of the ultimate trail against the cost of the ultimate trail with phases. And the, from what I see on public and, and social media posts, the public is completely confused and opponents to rail are using that confusion to their advantage and pretending that, um, that an interim trail with no further work is a possible solution. And I, I, I just want to remind all the commissioners that, that the director has stated time and time again that there is no such thing as a trail only plan. Um, and this interim business is just a, a terrible distraction. And, and I, I firmly believe it's impossible. You're not going to have rail banking successful. And I wish we would uh, do two things. Always show the public the full cost over time for the interim approach and and indicate how much how how expensive it is and how threatening it is to ever having a rail transit future. The other thing I brought up at the last uh, the last RTC meeting that it didn't seem that the work over the first 7 miles had actually been done and I'm in possession of a a letter from Progressive Rail that that seems to uh, confirm that that they are still waiting for confirmation and inspections to show that the first uh, several miles have been repaired. So I ask that the RTC, I ask again that the RTC uh, produce documents that show that that work has been done. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Scott. We are now, we're in oral communications. And uh, so if you are here and would like to speak, this is the last call, please raise your hand. And um, this will be our, our final uh, item for today. So um, get your hands up and I'll call on David Loves Rail and Trail next. Uh, hello, can you hear me? Yes. Oh, great. Um, good morning. Interesting times as usual. Uh, I saw the uh, interview this morning with Executive Director Preston, which was uh, on Lookout, which was um, very good, very appreciated. And uh, the last comment about buses, a guy mentioned that uh, something like uh, some people say that they prefer train to bus. And I, I just want to mention, I, I think there's a huge and necessary opportunity in our county to um, normalize bus use. I live on the west side and I've been using the new Route 18 quite a lot. It's super convenient, it runs every half hour. And I, I think there's a lot of opportunity to really promote you know, bus use uh, among people who maybe aren't even really that aware that we have a bus system. Thanks, that's all. Thank you. Okay, our next speaker uh, is Ryan, Ryan Sarnataro. Uh, yes, I, I think I, I would like to make the comment that it is important to always show the full cost as, as Barry Scott mentioned. And I think the important analysis in terms of uh, removing the tracks or not removing the tracks is the total budget over time for giving Santa Cruz a rail network. And if the current estimate is $1.3 million for the, oh, excuse me, $1.3 billion for, the, for operating the system over 30 years and installing it, and we have a situation where you're either going to spend $70 million or $140 million on $70 million on removing the tracks, $140 million on rail and 
rails in place and trail. What you're really saying there is that you're you're spending an extra $70 million now to retain the rails. If you were to look at the entire budget for uh, putting in the uh, putting in the system, you could see that what that 1.3 billion might have to go up another $200 million, but you'd be saving $70 million now. So you're really talking about a 10% difference in the cost of the total system over 30 years. And the question then is, will that extra 10% of budget be the reason why Santa Cruz is unable to afford a rail system? I think that's an important way to look at what Measure D is actually about. Thank you. Andy? Other Andy. hand, move, move on to our, our next, <coughs> which is uh, just an announcement of our next meetings. Uh, the next RTC meeting is scheduled for Thursday, August 4th, 2002 at, or 22 at 9 a.m. And our, we will hold a transportation policy workshop on the, sorry, my screen just froze. Um, I believe that's the 17th of June, Thursday at 9 a.m. via Zoom. Uh, so until then, uh, stay safe and healthy and uh, take good care. Likewise, everybody. Uh, Dr. Hurst, did you have a question? Well, I was wondering if we were gonna have oral communication from the commissioners. Ah, uh, we did not have that on today's agenda, but if you'd like to make a comment now before we close. Well, thank you, very much. thank you very much for that opportunity. You know, it is uh, close to election season, and we see uh, all kinds of uh, all kinds of deception going on out there. But we did see something concrete as well, and that was the recent letter from Progressive Rail saying they had no intent of giving up the uh, uh, the the use of the rail, no abandonment and that they were in fact waiting on the RTC to complete its obligation to repair the rails. And so I hope that that letter uh, was received and the commissioners did see it. You know, it's they're just waiting on the repair and that it is our obligation to provide rail service and it is our obligation to repair that rail so that service can take place. And we're also kind of hearing a mixed message that, and it's a mixed message about money, that we do have a lot of money in the RTC, but not enough to uh, support the rail usage. And so I think, you know, there needs to be some additional clarification and know that with the art, with the progressive rail, the St. Paul and Pacific uh, Rail Incorporated, their letter, I think that that should clear up some misunderstandings throughout the public and hopefully with the commissioners as well. Thank you very much. Thank you, Commissioner Hurst, Commissioner Rotkin. Could we we're, have? We're kind of we're straight. I just want to say we're straying from the agenda now. So um, I yeah I understand I recognize I, you know we do oral I communication. Just, so I, really I just quick, wanna, I just want to ask Kai Preston to respond to the last comment. We he did he responded to it last month, but I um, this issue about whether we have or have not repaired the rail uh, in the first seven miles uh, to the as as we're required to do. Um, but yeah, we notified uh, Progressive Rail that we completed those repairs back in August of last year. And we recently sent a letter to Progressive Rail indicating that they have not been maintaining that section of the rail line. And the response from Progressive Rail was, was with respect to that letter. Um, we have met our contractual requirements for phase one of the um, ACL agreement. And um, we continue to uh, work towards trying to meet our uh, requirements for phase two. Thank you. Well, we'd certainly like to see some evidence of that. All right. Um, we are going to adjourn the meeting, and um, this is a conversation that will uh, carry on uh, moving forward Forever. in future meetings. Thank you all. We're adjourned. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Sandy. Thanks for your chairing. Thank, Thank you. you. Take care. Bye-bye.